On June 23rd, Charles Hoskinson, the Credena founder, advised Congress to follow the model of bank self-regulation. Oh. He suggested writing a code, in a sense, that would make crypto regulate itself automatically. What needs to be done is to establish those boundaries, and then what we can do as innovators is write software to help make that happen. Because crypto can already perform complex functions like storing and transmitting data, such as identity or transaction info. And there will be no government involvement until the algorithm detects an anomaly. And Huskinson's idea makes sense because it stays true to the original idea of crypto. However, the US government's response doesn't make sense to me because the government banned crypto owners from working on the government crypto policies. But let's backtrack. It all started with Terra Luna collapse, when about 42 million people lost their money as Terra stablecoin lost its back to the US dollar. And Lael Brainard, US Fed vice chairwoman, commented on this crash. She said that the finance sector needs to meet the same safety standards as traditional finance before it gets large enough to become a threat to the rest of the financial system. Some countries have already started to implement regulation policies, but each country sees them differently. The US wants to fully regulate and accept stablecoins as an official part of the financial and banking system. In fact, there are laws saying that stablecoin issuers would be classified as a bank. And this means that stablecoin issuers will have to undergo regular audits, detail clear redemption policies, and specify what actually backs the stablecoin they give out. So overall, those regulations provide much needed transparency and security. The European Union worries about the euro as its value slides against the US dollar. And that's why they're focusing on stablecoins and even require them to be one-to-one -one pegged to euro. And they've also created Mika, markets and crypto assets, which aims to be the crypto bodyguard by 2024. Basically, Mika will do everything that the US does, but stricter. And by stricter, I mean that large stablecoins will have a limit of 200 million euros in transactions per day. Plus, if any crypto platform slips up and fails to protect investors or threatens market stability, the European Securities and Market Authority will simply ban or restrict those crypto platforms. Asia is different. <laughs> In April, the Indian government started to tax any income earned from the transfer of digital assets at 30%. And for the 20 million crypto investors in India, that's a sign to cut and run because the tax burden is too high. Some Indian companies are already fleeing to Singapore as it is more crypto friendly. And plus, people will buy less crypto on Indian platforms, the turnover will decrease, and of course the grey market will become much, much larger. Other governments, including Nigeria, Canada and Switzerland, are issuing central bank digital currencies, or CBDCs. So they're basically basically copying the Bahamas. And interestingly, the Swiss-based bank works on CBDCs in collaboration with the IMF and World Bank. And the fact that such big international organizations promote crypto regulations in the form of digital currencies makes me think that many countries will implement CBDCs as well. It's actually similar to the COVID times when the vaccines weren't welcomed until big organizations started to promote them. So every country approaches regulations differently. And no wonder why people's opinions vary as well. So are regulations good or bad? The majority thinks that regulation could be a good thing for the crypto market, as it signals an end to the Wild West era of trading and offers investors a little more peace of mind. Kevin O'Leary says that legitimizing stablecoins will make transactions easier, quicker, and cheaper. However, there's also some backlash from people on Reddit, YouTube, and Twitter. Crypto users are unhappy because the point of crypto was to have full control of your own funds, and now people put them in centralized exchanges, which are acting like the banks they despise. And making it like banks with the middlemen basically restricts our freedom. And yes, I can relate here. In fact, this thing happened to me. I was supposed to receive my salary and the money didn't come for about two weeks. It turns out my bank withheld my money because it was coming from a crypto affiliated organization. Can you believe that? They held back my money and didn't even inform me. And obviously after that, I had to sign some documents and stuff. And the whole process took me about three and a half weeks. So yeah. I don't want crypto to become like banks as well. Overall, I would say we need regulations. Without regulation, it's unclear how to do stuff in crypto that usually requires some legal help for non-crypto organizations. Take a DAO without any legal entity, right? How will it deal with taxes and protect its trademarks or its code? How will this DAO use scammers in case someone hacks it? Same thing with buying crypto and stablecoins. People can only understand the importance of regulations once they lose a couple of hundred thousand dollars due to the lack of regulations. Even lawyers can't help you return your money. And that's when it hits you that the crypto's freedom has a downside. Either way, we need regulations, but they need to be well thought out and adequate. So 
So, will the state be able to protect the crypto economy or harm it? Let me know what you think in the comments. And other than that, subscribe to the channel, like and share this video. I would really appreciate that. And have a wonderful day.